would like to invite Mokit Sandhu from the Sikh Heritage Month Foundation to share details on additional events planned by the Foundation for the month of April. Thank you. Good morning everyone. My name is Mokit Sandhu and I am here on behalf of the Sikh Heritage Month Foundation. So I'll just give a little bit of background about who we are. So we're a foundation that started off about three years ago and when we began we were just, or we organized a simple exhibit at in that we've uh, expanded all over downtown Brampton. We're hosting events at four different venues in downtown Brampton, including Pama, City Hall, and Rose Theater. We're super excited about this. Um, we're going to be hosting a month-long um, events and programming. So we have um, local artists and international artists coming in from everywhere. We have organizers coming in from all over the world to celebrate Sikh Heritage Month with us. We're incredibly excited to be um, presenting Rupi Kaur this year. So International Aid and Relief Foundation that's going to be joining us as well. And none of this would have been possible without the support of City Council and the City of Brampton, especially the team um, at Economic Development and Culture. So without their support, both financially as well as providing mentorship, we wouldn't have been able to put on these events. So we want to thank everyone here today at City of Brampton for providing us this support and mentorship. And there's nothing more empowering for a grassroots community organization like ours than knowing that our city is backing us up and is supporting us and is um, encouraging us to go forward with our hopes and our dreams. So I just want to thank you again. Thank you so much. Thank you, Councillor Dillon. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Sirit. Uh, thank you, Mokid. And uh, uh, I want to thank, first off, thank the, uh, um, you know, Bob and your whole team for uh, assisting uh, the Sikh Heritage One Foundation as well. And I want to thank this council as well. Uh, about three years ago, uh, we were able to get uh, Sikh Heritage Month uh, as an official event on, on the Brampton City Council. It's really important uh, in terms of the province uh, letting them that being letting them know that uh, you know what we have uh, uh, Sikh Heritage Month, a lot of your main uh, events going on in Brampton, and that we, uh, you know, have I believe the highest Sikh population in Ontario, one of the highest in Canada as well. That uh, we get an opportunity to uh, you know celebrate those Sikhs who not <coughs> contributed to Sikh <coughs> the community, but to the community as a whole, uh, to Brampton as a whole, and uh, uh, it's a wonderful opportunity for uh, Brampton. To, ha to host, I believe, about, uh, I think it's about 20,000 20, people that come into to downtown Brampton. So it's a wonderful event. It's a good opportunity to, to really celebrate the diversity uh, that we have in Brampton. It really puts us off on the map because, uh, uh, you know, I've been all over the country uh, and people you know, have, have come to me and said, listen, you know what, we're really interested in coming down and seeing what you do. Uh, and uh, we're really proud uh, of the way that uh, you guys, uh, Brampton as a whole, celebrates uh, its uh, many different communities. So once again, I want to thank Bob. I want to thank uh, uh, Keith, you guys and your whole uh, uh, group. Uh, and see it for you guys doing a, a wonderful job. So April 25th uh, uh, will be uh, an exciting day for, for everybody. So thanks a lot, everybody. Thank you, ladies. And uh, I know that the event that was held in Panama, uh, I guess it was last year, there were people from all over the world that came. And it was certainly a point of pride for the city of Brampton. So thank you for your hard work. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Uh, just one announcement that we're very proud of. I just want to introduce you to Fiona Peaceful. Um, on behalf of the selection panel and all of the corporation, we've selected Fiona as our director of HR. Um, what was unique of, is unique about Fiona, not only does she have the very strong technical competence to take this organization where it needs to go in high employee engagement, getting our people leaders to inspire others to deliver some great value to our citizens. So she has that technical competence, but she also has that character. And in a very short time that she's been here, you know, everybody's saying, what a people leader. And that's what you want in your leader of HR. So I uh, just want, if Fiona wanted to say a few words, if that's okay, Mary. Sure. Yep. Welcome. Good morning. Thank you first for the opportunity to say a few remarks. Um, I am delighted to be in Brampton. I was with an organization for 17 years, and part of my 
my due diligence to determine if I was going to come here was to look at the leadership of council, to look at the community, really the, the drivers, and so I'm really proud to be part of the community that that, so thank you. And then next is you're undertaking this really important work around strategic planning, and people are what will make the difference, and I think we all know that, that when you have good leadership, when you have um, good thinking at that strategic level, when you have people who inspire and help you really grow and develop, you get results, and that's what will really pivot, um, pivot, pivot Bram Brampton uh, to really make a difference on the results within the, the, the strategic plan that you're looking at. So thank you for the opportunity to be here. I'm looking forward to, to getting to know all of you. Um, please, uh, if there's ever an HR question or a question that I can help you in any way, um, I am the only Fiona Peaceful in the world, so you will <laughs> very quickly be able to find me. So thank you. Thank you. Welcome aboard. Thank you. Thank you. Our first presentation is from our CEO this morning, Harry Schlang, regarding our refocused strategic plan. We also have the related staff report 8.1, uh, entitled Strategic Plan Opportunities to Build a Future Ready City. Council held workshops on February 6th and 27th to discuss our current strategic plan priorities and refocus our priorities for the remainder of the term, uh, Council's term. Today's presentation and the staff report brings the outcomes from those discussions to Council for formal consideration and decisions. After the CEO's presentation, Council can ask questions and we can bring forward item 8.1 for consideration. Uh, Harry, you have the floor. Tell yeah, thank you, uh, Mayor and Council. I apologize if I go a little over five minutes. Uh, you know, there's a comprehensive report um, along with this presentation and I want to be respectful to the public not to go over. So if I go through some slides very quickly, it's because you have seen this before. But it's been a month uh, of refresh, so I'll go quickly. I mean, when we talk, heard the previous presentation, dreaming about Brampton, thinking bigger, um, you know, that's, that's what this is all about, is how do we take the great plan that you established, you gave direction to the community and to staff on about 44 initiatives in the strategic plan. It's really helped us and guided, guided us, but how do we take it to that next quantum leap level over the next 20 months? And that's what this is all about. We're gonna talk a little bit about the background, um, talk a little bit about the workshops, show you what, what you did say to us and how we incorporated that into uh, pivoting the new plan. We also want to talk about next steps. You talked about what sacrifices do we have to make if we make adjustments to this plan, what are the financial implications, and what are the next steps. So that's included here. If you recall, we, th we had the workshops because you hit your two-year mark in the plan, and you really should look back a little bit of what, what you've accomplished and then look at what's changed from a macro level um, look at all the funding that's coming uh, federally and provincially, almost $300 billion over the next 10 years. We want to follow the money, make sure the money follows us to Brampton. So perhaps we have to adjust a few things, and there's some, some really good things. The Innovation Corridor is getting a tremendous amount of visibility from uh, Toronto to Waterloo. We're right in the middle of that. How do we leverage that now and pivot the plan a little bit more focused? We've also got the university. It's a reality. So that's, you know, maybe adjusting of how we focus to go forward. And look at all the investments in health sciences, almost a billion dollar of investments. We've got some attraction in private sector investment here. So we thought there's some macro changes, there's some accomplishments locally. So how do we just laser focus going forward? We also, before we go into the future, I want to talk a bit about accomplishments and in your two-year term, you spent this organization tremendous amount of effort on accountability, transparency, there was a tremendous amount of scrutiny over this organization, and we've come out, you know, really well. So now you've, you know, the Abundsman Report is, is the last one, 10,500 documents reviewed, you know, hours and hours of effort, and it's come out that there was no findings. You've established some really good foundations in the financial systems, processes, and people. That was evidence in the budget, as well as in C.D. Howe's ranking uh, from, to A- minus from D in 2011. So you've done tremendous work on building a, a foundation of good government. You also led one of the biggest transformations in Canada that the Globe and Mail has said other Canadian cities should emulate. Um, you did it for the right reasons. You did it to improve the corporation. You didn't task me with cost reduction. You said, how do we build a better organization? When you do that well, you always get cost improvement. And you saw in the, in the uh, 17 budget, 3.8 million of cost reduction which led to uh, base services at 0.05 and 1%, well below inflation. 
We've also started bending the curve on the resource requirements, and, and we're going to continue to do that. So you're leading the way. You've got a good foundation. You're leading the way in transformation. And you've spent all that time on that. If you think of that transformation, one of the biggest in Canada, at the same time, you still accomplished a lot under your three other pillars, Move and Connect, Smart Growth, Strong Communities. You know, the university is a reality. We got over 200 million of provincial and federal funding in your two years. We've got uh, Pill Memorials opened up. We got Atlas coming, a private sector investment. You're leading the way in uh, transit ridership, well above provincial and national averages. And now you're even looking at elect electrification of buses, leading the way again, at least nationally. And as well, we're really driving uh, community engagement like we never have before, and it's going to intensify as we move forward. So we've been using this term future ready. I remember when I started, I didn't want to look back. You know, the reason why many of us came here is we know that this is where the future of a Canadian city will be, an emerging Canadian city. So we really started to talk internally about these principles. And probably one of the biggest we're making a lot of progress on is trust and confidence with each other as a team. We're starting to get council's credibility and we really hope to get the community's credibility moving forward with all the great work that's been done in good government. So that's sort of our common purpose in staff. We're really, this is more internal. We still have to get faster. We have a lot of more work to do, and I'll talk to you about that going forward. Sort of the future ready uh, common purpose we're trying to reach out externally to the organization is we're going to be a hub for jobs and innovation. There's no better opportunity with the innovation corridor, with the university, with the tremendous skill sets that we have in this corporate, in this community. A future city, everybody's talking about that. How do we lead the way in North America in transforming our city and a leader on a global stage, which you're already starting to see some signs of. So this is what we're trying to promote sort of externally. So when we met with you in the workshop, we felt all these things were converging, and it looks like I'm going to be at five, so I'll go fast, Mayor. Um, as, as we heard you, and this is your feedback so that Harry, you gave just us. Just so you don't have a... I don't want anything bad to happen. Uh, so do we agree that we're going to allow our CEO? To I apologize. Okay. So, so breathe. This is important. We want to get it right. Verbal diarrhea sometimes. But uh, when I think of the feedback that we got from you at the two work sessions, I just wanted to hit on a few of them. We really wanted to, uh, your equal representation at the region is still extremely important to you in, in, in your next 20 months. You also told us to think bigger, think like a, a single tier city and, and we're starting to do that as we move forward. You'll see that as we pivot the plan. We heard you about operations, customers, number one focus, better customer service. Make sure we, you know, we can do all these great things, Harry, but make sure you still cut the grass well, make the city look nice. You made sure you still wanted to maintain those core services. Economy, you've told us a lot about, you know, we've got to create jobs here, you know, commutes and congestions for our residents to leave for jobs you know we've really got to bend the curve on that your activity rate from 32 to 40 percent is in a very ambitious and bold goal but it's keeping all of us focused and this is probably the the coolest one for many of us as staff that you brought up and you said you know what are we going to look like in 25 years you know we're 600,000 we're going to be 900,000 what's that going to look like and what have we done already in our inventory? What are we currently doing? And what are the critical <laughs> next steps over the next two years to build that of, uh, future vision? This is going to require a lot of engagement. What I'm learning, and I'm not a planner, but what I'm learning to build great cities is you have to build that organically. You have to talk to your community. There's not sort of a cut and paste <coughs> formula. And uh, so we really have to get out and see our community almost immediately once you uh, approve this, this step. We also heard you that you got to be disciplined as council, as staff. Sometimes we get excited about little pet projects, but then if you allocate resources away from where we need to go, there's only so many resources. But you also said you want some agility. If there's a new opportunity that isn't on the strap plan, we want to be able to move and mobilize fast as well. So we got to balance that. We talked a lot about that even though you developed these 44 initiatives, they're really good. But when, this is what it looks like to our staff. You know, you didn't put any priorities on any of these. And you agreed that, you know, for us to get that focus, that laser focus, when you have everything, when everything's a priority, nothing's a priority, and you start to lose your focus. So you did agree that we could pump up the volume on a few. They were not taking anything away, but really pump up the volume on a few of these initiatives 
in light of the macro conditions that are changing in, in our city. And you came up, and we came up jointly as staff and yourselves as what we call game changers. Now, they're all initiatives within those clusters of themes. You know, the planning vision. What are we going to look like in 25 years? What have we already done? What are we going to be? And the urban center, Riverwalk, the Etobicoke Creek revitalization, the university, the transit that is performing so well, and all the mobility hubs, and of course the health partnerships. So we agreed as a team in the workshops to cluster many of those initiatives under those six, which allows us a bit more laser focus. So what we're saying is this was your current strat plan, the cosmetics of what it looked like, and as we promoted this to our 5,600 staff, but we want to shift it to this, where the good government becomes your foundation. We've got to continue to drive good government, and I'm going to talk to some initiatives that we've agreed to work on together. Uh, we're, the Move and Connect Smart Growth and Strong Communities, all 44 initiatives, are bundled under those six themes that we can then really mobilize all of our staff and the community around them and really get some traction and results. We've, the, uh, we love your, the vision you created, the bold, and you're going to see a lot more bold things from staff. Um, you know, even though if you say you don't like them at this time, we're going bold, we're going big. And you're going to see, start to see a lot of this uh, in the next month or so. So, uh, so we've got to continue with solid foundation of good government. But let's take it up a level. The staff has created, it's been so resilient for you. I've never seen an organization under so much scrutiny for so long. It's time now, though, that we've got, we've been paralyzed as an organization. It's time to build this place and get it more modernized. Our policies uh, and our technology internally are very, need lots of work. So that's just internally, let alone to the services we provide to the public. So we really have, the heavy lifting really is just beginning. To on, the, on the policies, the processes, the technology. We're going to continue to enhance our financials. You know, we did a great job in the operating budget on teamwork. We looked at operations from a corporate perspective, but now we got to look at capital from a corporate perspective and then roll that into the asset management plan, the long-term financial plans. You said you want that equal representation, so we can't give up on that. But where we really need to invest is in our people. Um, you know, the average municipality is at about 63% engaged, employee engaged. Private sector is well above 80. Top 50 companies, Canada, are around 87, 90. That's what we should be. Because our residents, when they're getting services from us, they can't compare us to another municipality. They compare us to Google, Facebook, and that's what we have to become in this corporation. That's why many of us joined here, to, ha to make that happen for you. But we have to invest in our people. They've been compressed. They've been under scrutiny, and it's time to really... We have some of the best people I've ever worked with, both private sector and public. Now, how do we let them innovate for you and drive some results for the, the group? And that'll deliver high customer service. So companies that are 80% employee engagement, their customer service, you know, are, are 7 to 8% better than those are 75%. We engage our people. The customer service will be the byproduct of that. The planning vision... What we're doing is consolidating all those master plans and all that work, and those are the how-to into the planning vision, and we're going to drive that forward. So those are all your initiatives in your strat plan on the left. So we're not removing anything. We're going to drive, those are more the how-tos, but what are we aspiring to do here? Uh, the regional transit connections, you know, everything that, that was in your strat plans on the right side. We're just making it, you know, more of a theme, more of something that we can all rally around. The university. We all know about that, and Michelle's going to be providing an update shortly. The health partnerships, we've seen some great, uh, you know, the Atlas project was where really it was teamwork by council and staff to bring that first private sector catalyst investment here around the health sciences, and, and there's going to be a lot more to come. The uh, Tobacco Creek, we've got some funding for that. We're doing the technical things. We've got to remove that SBA, and then we really get into the planning side of that to, to uplift this city into uh, global recognition. Our urban center, we've got to continue to enhance that. We only saw 1,500 population growth in the urban center in the last five years. We've got to double or triple that, and we've got to develop some catalysts for that over the next two years. On the community safety, that's something new that council came up. Uh, there's a report coming April 5th. Uh, the community safety uh, committee revitalized that, so that's, just, that's why I have it as an asterisk, because it still needs to be approved on, on the 5th of April, but it is there. So in summary, um, we're just pivoting the strat plan. We're not taking anything away. We're just, 
you know, to putting in government at the, at the foundational piece, uh, those three pillars that you created, all the 40, 40 initiatives around those six themes. Many of them intersect and collide, which helps us work together across the corporation. Um, and we really, we really want a new narrative about Brampton. We really want engaged employees. Skipping to work like I still am, right? You know, and, and <laughs> we want all 5,600 people doing that. We want uh, amazed outsiders, and that's starting to happen. And we really want proud Bramptonians. That's, that's the new narrative. We're going to work hard and hopefully have the credibility to start that with you. And uh, we were asked in the workshop, what are we sacrificing by getting a laser focus on around a few things? We're really not saying anything has to drop off. The only thing we all have to be uh, cognizant of is the ad hoc requests, especially when you're close to an election. You're, how many things you get staff to do. If you multiply 11 times 2, 22, if you get those a month, that's you know, 200 to 300 requests and that pulls resources. So if we could all together stay focused on what we want to achieve, that will help. Uh, the referred matters list that's in the report, we went through the, 44, the 43 items. Really only two relate to any of your strat plan work. But we're not saying delete, a lot, delete it all. We've, we've gone through it all. We're already working on some of the stuff. We just say, can we defer a few? Can we delete a few? Because I think about eight we're saying to remove or seven. Not many, and we actually covered them off in some other reports that are coming up. So we're just asking if we could watch that as we move forward in the last stretch here, the last 20 months. Um, again, when you asked about financial, we can't fool ourselves. There are going to be significant um, municipal investments required for the university. They'll be, uh, or for Etobicoke Creek revitalization. Anything you match with the feds and province will have to contribute. The community safety one, we're estimating about 75K for this year, maybe 200K for 18, which will, should be go to the budget process. We wanted to just kick off that initiative this year, uh, and you guys will solidify that in 18 and on through the budget process. So that's all the financial implications. But I mean, the staff, the team that's worked on this, the council, we really want to get Brampton prepared for that future ready. So thank you very much. Sorry I went real. <laughs> it was worth it. Uh, I have a few speakers who I think have comments or questions about your presentation, Mr. Schlein. Councillor Spobieri. Yeah, thank you, Madam Mayor, and uh, thank you, uh, Eric, for the presentation. <clears throat> it's always good to hear. Um, Positive uh, comments. <coughs> so it's uh, it's energizing. <laughs> uh, we appreciate that. Uh, I have a couple of questions. Uh, first, <coughs> on the uh, and since you emphasized on equal representation um, um, at the region, um, time is running out. As you know, uh, we have to. Uh, something has to be done by, I believe, December, and uh, we really haven't heard anything. Uh, lately, um, is, is there updates on that, or uh, is there something cooking that we don't know about? <laughs> well, um, Lowell provided an update on you know what's happening at Regional Council. Uh, as you all know, that needs the support of the Mississauga representatives at the, the Regional Council meeting. So it it could be killed at that point, but um, you know at least the the region is going through that process. But I personally haven't heard anything else at the provincial level uh, yet. But, you know, we've got AMO still coming up. I know the mayor's office is still working on that. So you yeah. can't, can't give up is what you've told us. Yeah, I guess we were just uh, <laughs> <coughs> discussing this, uh, Councillor Dillon, just the other day about where we had it. And uh, because, um, you know, the city just keeps growing and, uh, and uh, <coughs> we need some solutions. Uh, so uh, perhaps uh, I think Councillor Dillon wants to put this on the agenda coming up um, the committee to discuss further. The other question I have, um, <coughs> I, from my understanding, um, most cities of uh, Brampton size have a very uh, uh, good presen bank presence, uh, office presence in there. Whether you take, you know, Hamilton, you take uh, cities of, of our size. Most of the major banks have a, a good presence in the, in the cities, except for Brampton. I don't know whether they're being served from Toronto or whether they're being served from Mississauga, but any strategies in uh, trying to get the banks to uh, have a presence here uh, greater than they, than just a branch that they have all over the place? Mm. Again, um, 
No, there isn't a specific strategy. As you know, that um, economic development has said that we need to increase our office space in, in the urban core, and that that'll lead the way. What I'm learning from the, the great planners like Heather is that you got to get more intensification in your urban center, and then you, you know, there might be a chance for more of that office space. So, it's a work in process. Yeah. Yeah, I think no commitment <coughs> to. I believe that um, most cities who have a better um, recognition. It is because of um, they have a greater presence of uh, you know a greater employment presence. Uh, a lot of people are still saying that Brampton is just growing more houses and not enough jobs. You know, and, uh, so I think that's a real challenge for us to um, to try to balance that. I think we're at the turning point. You know, the university being coming here, the way our transit's operating. I, if we really together focus on that, I think I think we're at that crossroads. Okay. We could bend the curve like we are in our financials. We'll bend the curve on that. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Councillor Moore. Thank you very much. Harry, thank you for the presentation today. Um, it lifts us out of the weeds where we tend to spend some time bogged down on, you know, I'm not going to say they're less important because they all fall into this. They just sort of remind us. And I'm going to make a suggestion. We used to have some banners up here that were taken down, um, I think when they painted it, refreshed it for this term of office. But if you look at the, the six bubbles, the urban center, the planning, the river walk, university, I'm wondering if it wasn't worthwhile reminding everybody who comes into these chambers. And you've got two perfect spots here. Those on this side of the council chambers can look at it there and vice versa as a way to remind us when we come into these chambers that for this term of, of council, and maybe it changes for the next or not, but those six or even that whole, I don't know what the slide number is, 61-18, uh, you know, even having that on a banner on both sides of these chambers just to remind those who um, those of us who the decision makers those who prepare the reports and members of the public to sort of remind us uh, you know what we do in these chambers so that's just a uh, a suggestion because uh, we I think we it helps to keep us focused to your point of asking for reports if it, if it doesn't fit nicely into one of those, why are we asking the question? Is it something that we can ask staff by picking up the telephone and mm -hmm. and, and getting an answer to a question? Um, so anyways, uh, that's just a comment. Um, on the re referred matters list, you know, it was never meant to be sort of a, it became somewhat punitive in the sense that we'd say, you know, this has been outstanding. We sent this back for, you know, two years ago and you're not reporting for another six or eight months or whatever. And, and that was never the intent. Um, I guess I, I own a little bit of this in the sense that I put forward the motion to create the referred matters list in my first term of council back in 2001 or 2002 because I sat in these chambers while the more experienced councillors, um, you know, something would, would come up through the discussion and um, somebody, another counselor would say, well, you know, we asked staff to report back on that. I remember last year. So there was no, it was a tracking mechanism. Um, and and it, it really does support your, your uh, comment in terms, again, of being careful of what we ask for. It's a reminder that we're asking for things that are not supporting um, some of our term of council priorities. But, um, you know, I'm glad you're going through it. Um, mm -hmm to determine the relevance and whatnot. But I would hope that whether it's a report that comes here or whether it's something that that staff use as a tracking yeah, device, it, yeah, I'm sure you do. But, you know, back in, the, in those days, something was getting referred back every single council meeting, and it was more to the question of uh, what are you doing with it and when are you reporting back? So um, it, it perhaps has served its, its purpose and, um, you know, it is time to do business differently. It's okay. The, um, the other comment I want to make is on the river walk. And I think we need, we have an opportunity to really 
uh, do some marketing around what is that. Mm -hmm. Because it falls into planning, it falls into the urban center. We've taken it as a standalone. But a good number of our residents, when we talk about the river walk and you know it's it's interesting how it's working into conversations around the city they think it's something like putting a big screen tv up in the in the square they don't see it as having a function for me it's the key that unlocks the downtown whether we do intensification uh, where you know our, our desire to do intensification um, it all hinges on that because we have the special policy areas and the only way to unlock those is to build the river walk. So we have to uh, really reinforce in the community that this isn't a want. This is an absolute need for our city to move forward and achieve the sharper focus, future ready vision that this council and our staff and, our, and I think our residents are buy into as well. So I'm just going to leave that, that with you. But, you know, when we take something out and we isolate it, like a university, the university is part of planning and it's mm -hmm. part of urban center as well, but people identify with that more so than they do uh, this initiative. So um, I think there's some work that we can all be doing around that in terms of educating our our citizens of why we're asking for federal funding for it, why we're asking for provincial, and how it's going to benefit our city moving forward. Thank you. Councillor Medeiros. Through the chair. Um, thank you, CAO. I, I think this is uh, from when we started in 2014 to where we are now, um, really leaps and bounds. And uh, it's really exciting to see where the organization's going. I really like the term future ready. A um, couple observations. Uh, um, I have in specific uh, points. Um, you know, the first one you talked about our people. Um, you know, how important it is to invest in them. And so I think that really speaks to the human capital. You know, so the type of human capital, and it's opportune, I guess we have our Director of Human Resources, because something I've harped on, and I think maybe members of Council, is ensuring that we're tapping into what we have here in Brampton, which is that, you know, that youth who's highly educated, uh, diverse. You know, how do we get them into City Hall, and how do we get our municipality to reflect the community we're serving and to ensure that we're dynamic. Nothing, you know, better than to, uh, you know, in a sports term is uh, let's grow our rookies and, and make sure that we're future ready because over the next 25 years, notwithstanding that we have great staff here now, it's just in terms of that human capital, ensuring that we are getting the bright, the best, the skill sets. Um, so I think that's really important. So when we talk about youth internship programs, feeding, you know, opportunities into here, I, I can't underestimate how important that is, especially if we want to be future ready. Uh, the second point we talk about in terms of, um, and it goes a little bit to what Councillor Moore was saying about selling to the community the importance of uh, Riverwalk. One of the things that we have, especially when you're from a political perspective, we see here, and you talked about, let's being laser focused. You know, let's, understanding that we have all these initiatives, but let's be laser focused. But also, how do we engage with the community, the broad community, to sort of understand that laser focus? So, understand that we are going to provide those quality services, but as a municipality, this is where we're going. So I think that communication piece is extremely important because that makes our jobs easier. And, and it's almost engaging with us, but how can we engage with the broader community, engage with those sectors, the business community, to say, let's build this innovation uh, uh, hub, let's really uh, uh, build the health cluster, let's use that. So it's, it's that communication piece, and, and you know, I think we're, we're, we're going there and we're trying to communicate in that way, so I think that's important. Um, one thing I always hear from a business perspective is our streamlining, how difficult it is sometimes, the, the bureaucracy, and you've mentioned that many times. Um, how do we liberate staff, uh, and, and that I really heard that from you, liberate staff to feel that it's okay to mess up once in a while, it's okay to, um, you know, that risk aversion, to be able to provide that support and provide an organization where we're going to try to, you know, uh, try to be innovation, but when you're trying to be innovative, sometimes that does require trial and error, you know, and building that culture here. And, and unfortunately, I do feel sometimes it's a got you culture here, and, and you feel staff are under pressure in that. And, and so I, I really like to hear how we're going to support staff in that capacity. Um, or uh, do you want to comment? Sir? I'd like to comment, if I could, Mayor, on, yeah. on number two, the engagement. Um, since the workshop, you know, we're really, staff have been huddling, hope, hopefully you'll prove this today. We're going to do engagement like you've never seen before in Brampton um, because we haven't done it um, to the ex 
stents that we need now that we're hearing how you build great cities. You have to get out and talk to. So you're going to see a ton of that going forward. Um, and that's not just the random stuff, you know, it's, it's scientific as well. We want to get a good cross-section of who lives here, where they live, and what they're thinking. The third one, you know, you don't know perhaps, the 11 of you, of how bureaucratic this corporation, corporation is internally. Just internally. Forget before we go out and, and try and provide our services to staff. And we have compressed our staff. You've developed policies here, and I apologize to 10 years ago, 12 years ago, councillors, that, that try and catch that 0.001% of the 100% of our staff. You're, you're actually penalizing our best staff. So you will be involved in that, because there's a tremendous amount of work, because your policies and procedures are primitive. And, uh, you know, I had to first change the transformation of the corporation to enable us, but now the heavy lifting really begins. And that's just internally, when it takes us eight weeks to do simple things internally. So you think of a top staff member that, you know, we recruit, and they've been in a previous organization like the private sector that does things in three days and it takes them seven weeks. You know what? They get to the point where they don't want to innovate anymore. <laughs> so, so thank you for that. But you will be involved in that. Yeah. And you might be shocked at some of the delegations of authority you'll need to do. We're going to develop compensating controls. Okay. We're going to catch that 0.0001% of staff that sometimes violate policy. But you've developed policies to just catch the, that. And you haven't allowed the freedom and, and the innovation that's needed to move this place forward. Every new hire we hire, either from private sector or municipal, they cannot believe how much work it is just to get their job done. So we have a tremendous amount of work to do. What's really positive is how resilient they are, and they still want to stay. Because <laughs> what I do is I meet with staff six months after they're hired, and they're still really excited. So just think if we could fix some of the things. But it'll require some courage on your part, and as just, well as ours. And just lastly, <laughs> lastly through the chair, uh, for, for uh, Harry, in terms of our measurement, so I am sure this going to be in terms of uh, some performance indicators mm -hmm. tied to this, and I guess you'll bring that at a later time. Yeah. Because uh, th this is, and I think it'll help us easier to communicate um, how successful we are, because we are on the cusp of really, you do feel, um, especially over the last year with all the great announcements, excitement around the university, the hospital, that we are on the cusp of, you know, turning that corner. Uh, mm -hmm. And it's important that if we can really provide that discipline regarding measurement and and uh, in terms of where we're going, that you know, it'll be easier also to communicate. So, really exciting work. Thank you to staff, thank you. and thank you very much, Councillor Dillon. Um, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, thanks for the presentation. I think it was uh, uh, very informative. Um, and uh, the one thing I, um, the one part of the, the whole strategy is the word future ready. Uh, I know we had a discussion uh, a few weeks ago. Uh, we're speaking of other municipalities whose whose motto is uh, something that uh, uh, you know stands out that gives uh, its residents a lot of confidence. It gives uh, you know people who want to invest in those cities confidence. Just because uh, you're, you're blatantly, you're boldly you know, stating what you want to do. Future ready, uh, in my opinion, is, is extremely key uh, in showing a residents and showing. Uh, those people who want to come to Brampton that you know we're ready for them and that we're preparing our city uh, yeah. we're, 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 we're gonna have a city that's prepared for them right. uh, you, you know we're bringing the university and having uh, the different strategies around attracting business I think that's uh, uh, amazing um, I just want to comment on a couple of things um, I, I think you kind of answered I think uh, Councillor Spro very alluded to uh, a, a couple of the concerns that uh, uh, I kind of wanted to have a discussion on, uh, and perhaps it, not now, but a, a, at some other point. Um, you know, we're growing. We're going to be 900,000 um, people by 2041, approximately 900,000 people. And, um, you know, we spoke about regional representation. Uh, we're kind of unsure at this point on what's, what the province is doing. I know that uh, uh, there's a, a timeline by, I think, December that... Uh, uh, the councillor was referring to. Um, we right now have, I think uh, I can speak for Ward 9 and 10, Councillor Spovier and I have about 120,000 people that we serve. Um, right now in the plans from staff, is there 
uh, are we going to be looking at possibly having uh, changing the ward boundaries, adding um, adding uh, perhaps more counselors just so we can uh, ensure that uh, uh, you know there's you know eat, the, the constituents are being served in an appropriate way and I think that's something that might uh, need to be discussed down the road. Uh, perhaps if you can uh, speak to yeah. that. Uh, through you, Mayor Jeffrey, um, to Councillor Dillon. Uh, the ward boundaries were last changed in 2013, and with that change and the population projections at the time, um, staff and council felt that they would be resilient, resilient enough for the 2014 election and the 2018 election, but they will need to be revised for the 2022 election. Right. So that right. will be in the in our work plan um, starting in 2019. Fair enough. Uh, and, and we spoke about office space as well, attracting um, business um, uh, to the urban center, but I think um, certainly I'm confused at points because I'm hearing conflicting information. Um, and uh, I had a, a conversation with staff uh, a, a few weeks ago in terms of where uh, our plans are to develop and where our plans are to attract business. And uh, a lot of the times I hear, um, just to back up a little as well, what they did was put it on a map for me. And that really uh, made it easier for me to understand and uh, to, to explain to a lot of uh, uh, you know, my constituents on, on what our plans are to develop and uh, to attract jobs as well. Uh, and you know, when we talk about to develop, developing our downtown, uh, I've heard uh, that instead we need to do, we need to focus on the Queen Street corridor. Uh, and, you know, what I recently heard from staff was that, uh, you know, we're going to have a lot, of, uh, our focus is going to be more residential there, whereas opposed to uh, business. So uh, I'm hearing conflicting, conflicting information and, uh, you know, I'm, uh, you know, conducting, you know, my own business based upon things that I hear. I think if we have uh, a presentation put out on a map of exactly where we're focused on, what we want to do, you know, what our plan is for downtown, and kind of make it, I don't want to use the word dumb it down, but kind of make it very easy uh, and make a visual, uh, you know, visually explain it. I think it might be easier for our residents as well. Through you, Mayor, too. And that came up in the workshop. You really wanted to see a map of, you know, not Council Prevere brought up what are we going to look like 25 years from now, but a map of what's happening today, what's happening in the future, what's on the books. So we will do that. We have to do that. Yeah, if we can do that as well. And, and just one last thing. You know, I've heard a lot uh, uh, about Future Ready. I kind of have an idea of what, uh, um, what, what we mean by Future Ready, but can you just, just <laughs> briefly define what you, when, when, when you say Future Ready, what do you envision? Well, you know, it's funny because a lot of staff feel, Harry, define it for me, and, and I'm not sure I want to yet <laughs> because it's a mindset, because this, this organization has been so plagued by the past. And, and really, when I came here, I just said, you know, we're going to focus on the future. We're going to focus on the future. And I started saying that, and then, and then people came up with the term future ready. I didn't. Staff did. And then, you know, it's a mindset. Internally, I think I showed you that slide, why I can't find it now. <laughs> I, uh, I'll go back. Internally, we thought we'd start to talk about, oh, where the heck is it now? Okay. Internally, we started to talk about, you know, future ready as trusting each other as, com you know, uh, as colleagues within the corporation. Because you had such deep silos with those four chief roles. So the first phase was, you know, how, do, how are we ever going to get to the trust and confidence of, of council and the community when we don't trust each other? So that was sort of the first mindset internally. How do we get faster? How do we help each other? How are we more accountable to each other? So that was sort of a mindset. But the future ready terminology is something that it'll evolve over time. Now, in the definition that we're using externally a bit more, it, it was a, you know, a, a relevant global city, you know, that we are, are known and recognized globally that we're a hub for jobs and innovation. And what was the third one now? But it's in the slide. So we're, we'll shape that. And actually, I think that in the community engagement, that's how we get that organic feedback. What is it to them? What is it to the, the student, the high school student, to the mm -hmm. person that's working here? So it'll evolve. Yeah, just to, just to finish as well, we were talking about the city of Surrey as well, which is a very yeah. uh, similar size city. And uh, um, you know, when you come into Surrey, 
uh, on their board it says city of Surrey the future lives here yeah uh, and, and I really think we need to uh, down the road I guess like you said we haven't defined it yet but I think we really need to uh, uh, get a you know define that uh, and very get a very narrow scope on what that means because I think uh, uh, like I said a lot of people are really excited about it uh, but a lot of people are saying what does that mean I know what it means to me and what I want it to mean uh, but I think we really need to to get that together. We gotta we gotta hear from the, the residents. Exactly. Yeah. Thank you. Councillor Pleshi. <clears throat> thank you, Madam Mayor. Um thanks Harry for the presentation. Um I want to send uh, a thank you to, to you and all your staff for putting the workshops together, putting this together. And um I don't disagree with uh with the with the game changers, the uh the six uh, bubbles up here. <clears throat> with uh in terms of um, what they actually mean and what they actually mean to uh, to the residents though um, you know when I when I'm going out and talking to residents and, and I can honestly say that no uh, whether you're talking about levels of government or, or staff or, or anyone at the municipal level um, or any uh, level of government nobody knows the residents more than the councillors around this table and the mayor so when I'm out talking to the residents um, you know they're not coming to me and, and uh, talking to me about the river walk um, they don't uh, fully understand um, what kind of game changer and what this could do for uh, the city of Brampton and, and, and in the downtown um, the health partnerships isn't uh, isn't on top of mind I'm talking to uh, the residents uh, regional transit connections uh, the same a little bit about the university when you uh, engage the residents in, in wanting to uh, um, to discuss the university but it's a, it's usually a short conversation uh, most conversations that I have with the residents are about uh, about jobs uh, uh, safe communities um, reasonable property taxes lower property taxes uh, road park uh, facility maintenance uh, especially winter maintenance um, and growth which is uh, which is a provincial um, uh, provincial thing that's uh, dictated to us by the by the province so when we're engaging our residents and, and we're talking about these things that are, that are so high level and, and uh, you know for the, the people that do uh, come to the council meetings and, and stay engaged they get it but f that's they're a small percentage in in our population across the city so when we're out and, and talking to the residents and engaging them about you know these things uh, you know the river walk to a to a resident in Ward 2 in Heart Lake it's gonna be a short conversation but with you know some of the other things that uh, that we that I do talk to the residents about you know those are some of the things that that they want to hear and what we're doing about those things you know we talk about a regional trans transportation and you know why do we keep you know why do we have one of the best transit systems in our fastest growing transit systems in Canada well you know we're a commuter, commuter city and uh, um, I, I think we were in a meeting the, the other day and our our transit rose by nine percent and in Sioux was the last year uh, which is unprecedented mm -hmm. well, why is that well like I said why, uh, if people hear that then why are we then um, turning telling them that we're yeah we're focusing on these on these transits and we're and we're putting more effort into our transit system and and you know when the majority of people we love to get them out of the cars and into buses and stuff but you know congestion is a major problem yeah. and, and what are we doing about that um, you know there there's a lot of provincial initiatives in here as well that uh, that we really don't have we can have the conversations and we can continue to push our MPPs and MPs at the federal level uh, you know two-way all day go uh, we can have conversations until we're blue in the face with our MPPs but the bottom line is they're not going to do anything until they want to do something um, you know two-way all-day go service was always a top priority of mine to get it out to uh, to the Mount Pleasant area but it's it's almost like again you can talk to them until you're blue in the face and you can uh, you know try and relay to them the importance of having that in that in there but I guess so so my question is it stems to you know these major things that that we talk to our residents about how are we portraying that these are the things that we're we're essentially working on and and what they're asking for and what they want 
for their better quality of life. So through you, um, Mayor, uh, you know, as Council Moore said, we got to we got to equate these game changers to something that they would understand. There's no question. And you know, under good government, you know, remember we said that we got to keep the lights on. Our operations still have to be good. Council Madero's brought in some metrics that we should start to introduce to really show them some of our good levels of service that are table stakes here. You know, we do it. Some great levels of service here. So we just have to bring it down to what you said is how that'll build a better quality of life for them. If congestion's important, how does the, all of these game changers help them with that? How does, um, you know, good government help them with keeping the property taxes reasonable? But recognizing you can't save your way to success. Right? Mm -hmm. If you ask any resident, though, I want lower property taxes, but when you say, do you want a reduced service level in your park? They would say no. So we, <laughs> we got to start to talk differently and get more scientific data. But we have to really leverage you as counselors that are connected to the residents of how we package this. Mm -hmm. What are those three big things? And, and uh, it's clear we got to work on that. Yeah. Those bubbles don't mean anything to every every person. But if it means something to helping their congestion, driving seven, 60 minutes from what I hear just around the region of Peel now, we're starting to study some of these things. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the, the lack of, uh, you know, beauty around their neighborhoods. You know, I was here Saturday, <coughs> drove around for eight hours with some staff. And, you know, many of the, you know, we got to improve the, the quality of life in many of our neighborhoods as well. So how do we bring it back to them? Uh, it's probably not the best time to drive around the city after the winter and, and before, yeah, but it's, our, it's before also our parks the best clean time. up and stuff like that. <laughs> um, we got to work with you on how we simplify this. Mm -hmm. And again, I, I, you know, I, I want to go back to, I don't disagree with these, the, the, the bubbles. I, I really don't. And I understand it. I get it. Um, but I, I need to ask the question, so we talk about, you know, uh, we got a lot of, uh, a lot of buzzwords in here and, and um, we talk about, you know, the game changers and, and the future ready. Okay. So what now and when, okay. where, how? <laughs> yeah. That's the heavy lifting. Mm -hmm. And, and the corporation isn't modernized enough. There's a lot of work to get there, but so we'll have multiple and, and you're going to be engaged in that. Yeah. Good. Thanks, Madam Mayor. Councillor Bowman. Thank you, through you, Madam Mayor. Um, Terry, thank you for putting this report together. It's, I know it's taken a very, very long time to, to put this together, with a lot of other things going on. Um, when I hear you talk about mindset, I, I just compare mindset to a change in corporate culture. Yes. And, and perhaps the corporate culture around here um, in the past has been um, pretty silo oriented, vertically oriented. Here's, here's my job, here's what I do. And, and I think the change that needs to be made internally is here's my job, here's how I do it, here's how I'm going to prove my worth to the organization, and here's how what I do affects every single other person who works for the organization. And I think you're well on your way to that. Um, when, we, when we start looking at an individual's value to the total organization rather than an individual's value to his department, I think that's the first step in changing the corporate culture. And once that changes, then the entire outlook changes. Everybody starts talking great about everything that's going on here in Brampton. We're all positive. We're all upbeat. We're all working together towards the same goal, which is the improvement of the city overall. And once we reach that point, then I think, then I think some of that heavy lifting has been done. And a lot of the other things that follow are going to come naturally after that. So I applaud you on, on this report, and I look forward to seeing the, uh, the change in corporate culture coming here real fast. Mayor, through you, Mayor, I want to say that what I'm so uh, pleased with, and this is my, you know, sixth or seventh municipality, I've worked in private sector globally, what I'm amazed with is, is the resiliency of your staff. You, we, you, as council, and as previous leaders in this corporation, just haven't focused on the human capital. I can't believe when we finally do that, of how exciting this place will be and how much productivity you'll get, but you haven't. You haven't, and this council as well. I walk around the building, I'm now on the fourth floor, you can't breathe properly. You haven't focused. You haven't given your most important asset the tools to do their job well, and, and you haven't given the leadership. So we are now building that, and uh, you know we're working with every people leader, 500 people leaders, to train them on inspiration 
not about siloed work efforts. And we're seeing some great things. I meet with staff six months after they're hired, and I'm so impressed of how they're thinking what you're saying, Councilor Bowman. How can I help? I'm, I'm from Brampton. I want to build a better community. And so, so now the people leaders have to talk to them more about how they fit into the bigger piece. This is going to help a lot because, you know, we couldn't, it was hard to communicate to them all those initiatives in that bland way we presented them, but this is going to help a lot. You know, if, if you approve this, we already got the websites ready. I'm going to get out and talk to 3,000 staff in the next month. This is going to help a lot. So we're trying. Good. Thank <laughs> but you. But it'll need your support even in this term that we have to focus. We focused on corporate asset management and all the financials. We've got to focus on the most important, and that's the human capital. And we have not done that. Good. Thank you, Madam Mayor. One of the things you said that really um, made my ears perk up was about the engagement of getting out and getting the, f the key to me to the future of the city is the vision that the people of the city have. We all have our own visions. The council can have a vision. The mayor can have a vision. Staff can have a vision. But it's really, uh, to me, a, a successful city will be what the people. Mm -hmm. The problem that we've, I think we've had in the past is we try to have focus groups. We get individuals come out to try to give us um, their opinions on things, but you, you always see the same people come out. Mm -hmm. And I think the key, I can tell you the key to, I think, my success as a council member of, of, of learning what I think people wanted was purely by accident. And that accident was that I spent in my earlier uh, career, I spent a lot of time all over the city, in the recreation centers, in all, all over, mm -hmm. because of my kids. I was with them in all the sports that they were in. So at those, uh, it wasn't a planned going out to talk to people. It was just being there and then them talking to me because they knew I was a council member. So I was hearing everything that they were saying, not realizing that now I'm picking up on something. and. I th when you talked about more engagement, I think that's going to be the key. But it won't be by just having focus groups. No. It, we have, to, and what I like about what we've been doing lately around here, is when I think about the fire department, for instance, and the fire crew that are out in the malls and things like that, and talking to people. Yeah. And I've seen them do it, and I've gone over to them and said, you know, thanks, thanks for being out there, because that's where they pick up on the things where people are just, yeah, you're not having people focused on a vast and come. They're just there doing their daily routine, and then they have an opportunity to talk to staff. We've had our bylaw guys out there, you know, in the malls and things like that. We've got to do more of that. We've got to catch people, um, and maybe economic development can do it, and all the other departments can do it. We've got to catch people in, an, in their environment that they're not just coming to focus on giving an opinion. They've now got to give them the opportunity to go and just tell you what they, they want. And that's where I think you'll you'll get the vision of the whole city. Um, the, the flood, the, the, the um, river walk, I want, I want to say, and I've said it before, but I'm going to repeat it. The problem with we have, and, and, and Councillor Pleshi is quite right, the people of Heart Lake don't care about the river walk. The people in Springville, I'm sure, don't care about the river walk. The people around downtown think, wow, that's a nice thing. Some of the people in the outskirts of my ward don't care about the river walk because they don't understand what the river walk is because it sounds like a want, not a need. In order for the future of the city, the river walk is a need. It's it's a future of the downtown. We're so constrained right now about how we can't build in the downtown. We can't so we gotta stop calling it a river walk. It it's a flood mitigation uh, solution slash river walk. At the end of the day, it will be a river walk and it'll attract people from everywhere. There's no doubt about that. But as long as we keep calling it a river walk, the people around the city are going to say, oh, well, I ain't a river walk, so what? Don't spend my taxpayers' money. Having said that, yeah, cut it out of the budget. But what they ha we have to help them understand is by, by creating a flood mitigation, by opening up the downtown to being able to get the, the things that, 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 that other council members are talking about, the, um, the business, as Councillor Povieri mentions, a major bank. Wouldn't it be great if we had a major 
bank building, you know, 40 stories in the downtown or on the Queen Street corridor? Well, we can't put it in the downtown right now. There's nowhere to put it. Why? Because we have a flooding problem. We mitigate that, maybe we'll get that, you know? And why would we want that? Well, want for taxation, jobs. for one thing, the jobs that are being created, the economy. The reason why Canada, I believe, it's just my opinion, but is, is or the economy of Canada is kept fairly good compared to the United States, is that our federal government have continued to focus on jobs and creating those jobs, and they're, they're, they're throwing a lot of money at us to, to help create those jobs. You know, you might think, well, they're throwing money at us for transit and all that kind of stuff, and that's great, we're having the transit, but they're also creating the jobs and all that, and that's keep, kept our economy in Canada um, a lot better than what the Americans have. And, and you know, we, we, we talk about being in recessions and things like that. Compared to down in the United States and some of those places, we're not even close to what they are. I mean, their, their jobs are just not there, and, and they're, they're all, um, I've seen some areas that their oil rates are just declined right down. So that's a, long, uh, a lot of words just for a couple little things, but mm -hmm. please let's just let's help so the people understand why this flood mitigation river walk is an important thing. And why is building along the Queen Street corridor uh, an important thing? And I, I haven't heard about it just being residential. To me, it's been, it's been 90% about getting offices and, and jobs and all that stuff along that corridor. So if there's a rumor out there that we're just trying to put uh, housing on there, that's not true. Maybe that rumor's out there because there had, the last couple have been just that. And, um, but we gotta, we got to help the people of Brampton understand why is it important to create those jobs, why is it important to create high-rise office buildings and things like that. And to me, it, it, it's, it's what we get back. It's a taxation that we get back in there that helps keep our taxes down. Uh, Councillor Dillon talks about it all the time. We've talked about it for years, and we want to get that portion of that up more, so that you know the, the taxpayers themselves are paying less because we're getting the businesses are paying the majority of those taxes. So I, I really like what's going on. I really I've seen a huge difference around here in staffing. I think uh, I think the people are a lot more happy. I have a lot more confidence. And once we get all the confidence within each other, within staff, and staff have that. That's going to flow right out into the community, yeah. and I think we're, I think we really are on the right track. When I think about what future ready means, it means if I think back to 25, 26 years ago when I started, what we were thinking about then is not nearly what we are thinking about now. So what we have to be ready for in the future is what what's going to happen, what changes are going to happen, what should we really be thinking about? We may not know, but we've got to be ready for that. Right. That's great. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Some great feedback, and heard you loud and clear. You get kind of stuck as a municipal employee. Sometimes you know the jargon, but thanks for, you know, we have to equate what all those bubbles mean to the Heart Lake people, to the, you know, in all wards. More jobs, more innovation, less congestion. You know, we've got to equate that. So thank you. We'll work hard at that. So, Mr. Shang, I'm going to weigh in. I just wanted to uh, thank Council for such a robust conversation. I think it was really helpful. Um, I wanted to make some suggestions, some practical suggestions. Um, one of the things that I am hearing a lot about how people describe us, uh, particularly the President of Ryerson, he's calling us an innovation hub. So the fact that other people are starting to define us may be something we want to look at in the future. And the other suggestion I would have is, we've had a lot of conversation around this table with regards to clarity, with regards to Riverwalk. One of the challenges I had when I went to see Minister Sohi in Ottawa to talk about this infrastructure project and the priority that this council put on that project is he didn't know what it was either. So one of the things that helped me describe it was a picture. So here's my suggestion. We've had some really good success putting videos together with regards to transit and healthcare. They've helped me when I go down to the province and I think they will help us describe where our priorities are from a strategic planning perspective with this particular project. We need them to understand it. It's going to be in excess of a hundred million dollars that we're asking the federal government for. I know you're going higher. I'm just trying to prepare the ground here. That's the beginning, but that's what I asked Minister Sohi for. But we also need the province to engage in this. So in order for us to be the best advocates, 
we need to be able to help people understand because flood mitigation is kind of unsexy to talk about. It's like the word infrastructure. It takes a long time to build, it's very expensive. How do you uh, engage people and have them be interested? When they see the pictures and they see the opportunity, they're interested. The front end of it is hard to describe. So I would say, for me, the picture told a thousand words for me and helped the minister in Ottawa understand why it was a priority for Brampton. So I think it, we, are, we have the talent in-house to do that. We've been successful from a transit perspective, and I think it's helped us in our health conversations in the past. So it's a suggestion that we might want to consider on a go-forward basis. Councillor Gibson. Yep. Sorry, did you yep. like yep. that? Yep. Yep. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I just got to say I, I agree 100% with the Mayor. And when, when I saw this, the 6.1-30, that's a perfect type of picture that I think what she's talking about. And if you look at you see a river walk in there, and you see, I don't know what you call that, how you put it, like it's not really there, but it is there. You've got nothing. But what you can have is that. And I think that's what people will, will that's, that's your jobs. That's your... That's your future right there is all that kind of stuff. That type of picture is a, it's a perfect type of picture to help explain not only to the ministers and that, but the people of Brampton. Because, you know, you can almost put in down below, the, I mean, it looks like you, you show a river walk down there and what it would be, would it be, you can almost show what it is now and you've got nothing except for water flowing through that takes away. But by having something that's proper, you this is the future of Brampton and it's a picture of it. So. Uh, just wanted, just wanted, I think the mayor's right on in that. Thank you. So, Mayor, this was inspiring for staff. So, I, the dialogue's been great. I know everybody's watching, and uh, we'll mobilize everyone once you approve this. Yeah. So, thank you, Mr. Schlang, and thank you to all your staff. I know it's been a long journey to get to this document, and I, I on behalf of Council, I think we want to thank you for the work that you've done. Um, I have a motion. Moved by Councillor Medeiros and seconded by Councillor Gibson. This is item 6.1 and 8.1. And Council, I'd like to ask for a recorded vote on this. I think this is important and we should be uh, uh, making our position public on this one. So this is uh, 6.1 and 8.1 that the report and presentation from Mr. Schlang, Chief Administrative Officer, dated March 17th at the Council meeting of March 29th, 2017, Strategic Plan, Opportunities to Build a Future Ready City, be received. And two, the council review the current referred matters list set out in Appendix B to this report and remove items that do not pertain to the strategic plan focus areas. Uh, apparently, people want to stand. So, a recorded vote's been requested. It's a all, seventh inning stretch. All in favor of the motion as read by the mayor, please stand to be counted. Showing in favor is Councillor Fortini, Councillor Bowman, Councillor Medeiros, Mayor Jeffrey, Councillor Dillon, Councillor Sprovieri, Councillor Paleshi. Councillor Willens, Councillor Moore, Councillor Gibson. Madam Mayor, the motion carries unanimously 10 to 0 with one absence. Thank you. Do I need to do this other motion as well? Okay, so um, I don't have a mover or a seconder. Do I need that? So this is just uh, the housekeeping as related to the second part of the motion, which is the referred matters list, that the following items be removed from the referred matters list. This is something Mr. Slang spoke about. Can I get a mover and a seconder? Councillor Moore, Councillor Willems. So these are the seven items. All those in favor? That's carried. Thank you. Okay, our next item, another good item, Item 6.2, a presentation from Michelle McCollum, Officer of, Office of the CAO, regarding university update. Good morning, Michelle. Welcome. And you, I believe you've given us the presentation. It's in front of us. Good morning, Madam Mayor and members of Council. Delighted to be here this morning to provide you with an update on our game-changing initiative to bring a university facility to Brampton. So just a, a reminder of where we are, back in October, the province of Ontario announced funding for university facilities both in Brampton and Milton, an investment of $180 million. In January, the province released its call for expressions of interest, which closed on March the 6th. 
On March the 14th, uh, we were delighted to hear that the, the province revealed that Ryerson University, in partnership with our uh, local friends at Sheridan College, submitted uh, an application to bring a new university facility to our city. That's the first stage of the, the submission, uh, and it was an expression of interest. So now the province engage in more detailed discussions with Ryerson and Sheridan and will be asked to submit a more formal proposal in July. In f uh, the fall of this year, the province are looking to make a more detailed announcement about the initiative and what that means. So let's talk a, a little bit about our proposed partnerships. Ryerson University, as you know, is a, a, a huge leader in the university scene. They have around 43,000 students located in downtown Toronto. They're the third largest university in Ontario and are in the top 10 in Canada. They are the most applied to university in Ontario. So for all the places they have, they have the most students applying. They are champions of diversity of entrepreneurship and of course of innovation and they believe in learning through real world, world knowledge and believe that exper experiential learning so experience and learning both go together hand in hand they have nine innovation hubs uh, famously they have their dmz their digital media zone so what about their proposed partner sheridan college as we know, uh, their largest campus, the Davis campus here in Brampton, one of Ontario's leading post-secondary institutions, not just colleges, but post-secondary institutions. Uh, they have around 22,000 full-time and 17,000 part-time employees. Uh, they have 8,000 students here on the Davis campus in Brampton and have two centres of excellence. Sheridan is a transformative institution leads by example and has been uh, an amazing award-winning institution for our city. So it's very exciting that these, these two leading post-secondary institutions are interested in investing more here in Brampton, where as we know we have a young, fast-growing community, a community that is talented and believes in the power of education and learning and a population who wants to be creative, innovative, and wants to lead the way. So what have we been doing as staff in the city to make sure that we make this as successful initiative as possible? We have a very strong staff team from uh, our, all departments across the city, and we also have our school boards involved in that team, Brampton Library and the Region of Peel. These are people who have busy schedules but have uh, dropped what they are doing and to focus on the university because they understand how important it is for our community. That team is working to make sure that we provide the best information that we can to be the best host community that we can for both of these institutions. We are planning on having more formal engagement going forward with Ryerson University and with Sheridan College and you'll be hearing more about that as we go forward. What I would like to acknowledge at this time is that you may have heard comments or speculation about a proposed location for this university facility. What's important to note is that no decision has been made on a proposed location. We recognise that there is, t it is time and we believe that, that Council should be weighing in on this conversation. And so as staff, we are preparing information that we're planning to bring forward to you uh, two weeks from today to the next council meeting. That information is likely to contain details about uh, potential sites, which uh, we'll, uh, we will be suggesting that will be a closed session uh, discussion. So you will see that information coming forward. But we wanted to emphasize to you that there isn't information going forward from staff to the, to the province or other institutions without council seeing that first and weighing in on the com conversation. So we want to make sure that you're aware of that. We have expanded our discussions with the province and also with the ADM who is responsible for moving forward the recommendation. You'll remember Sean Conway and his report and the highly skilled workforce. Um, so they've uh, shared with us their priority really is to emphasise experiential learning um, and also looking at labour market information to make sure 
that, for example, the guidance curriculum in schools, that we're arming students with the information that they need to be able to study a course that will lead them to be able to get a job and that there are jobs available in the area that they are looking to study. Our business outreach is continuing with our outreach to our top 50 employers. We've recently met with Cisco who are very interested in having further discussions and also Bob was meeting with IBM this morning. Uh, so that's why he, he's not here at the moment, he's very busy. Uh, so, and we also are working more heavily with the, with the Board of Trade and developing um, more outreach opportunities for our businesses through focus groups and other ways that we can tap in, uh, share the information about where we're going and understand how businesses and our employers can contribute to this initiative at, at different levels and in different ways. Our next steps are to have those ongoing discussions with Ryerson, Sheridan and the province and uh, we, are, we are working with them to create opportunities so that council can be more engaged with, with those discussions. We'll be continuing our objective to outreach to uh, as many employers as we can to get them engaged and understand how uh, they can take part in the, this initiative. We'll be aligning that engagement strategy with Ryerson and Sheridan. We know the importance and we know how many stakeholders are involved and we want to make sure that we're, we're absolutely aligned um, in our partnership to make sure we're engaging as, uh, as appropriately as, and as well as we can. Our vision of education, innovation, collaboration. What's really exciting is both of those partners already engaged in that kind of vision for their own institutions and so it's a, a great opportunity for us to be able to work to, to really establish Brampton as that uh, innovation hub um, through working with those partners. And we will be providing, continuing to provide regular updates to Council uh, so that you know exactly what's happening every step of the way as we go forward. So, Madam Mayor and members of Council, we have uh, an amazing opportunity uh, emerging where we have two leading post-secondary institutions. They want to be part of Brampton's vision and Brampton's future, to be a hub for innovation, for education and collaboration, and show that Brampton is a leader on a global stage. Thank you. Thank you, Michelle. I have a few speakers and questions, I think. Councillor Dillon. Uh, first off, I, I just want to thank you for the presentation. I think the last presentation was a, uh, a really good segue into this university update uh, uh, because it's one of the game changers that we, we did speak about. And, and I just want to thank staff for uh, providing these updates. These have been uh, very beneficial uh, to us uh, as council members and when we have to explain uh, to the residents of what's going on. Um, and, and I also want to thank you because uh, particularly in a couple of communities there's been a lot of misinformation a lot of um, you know uh, there's been some issues where you guys ha have helped uh, quite a bit in, in uh, situations where instead of we're talking positive about uh, uh, the university we've had to do a lot of I guess clean up of some of that misinformation so I just want to thank you for uh, assisting me uh, in, in getting that input but uh, I have a um, request and a question I guess mixed in one when we when we speak about um, uh, you know under widening the widened business outreach and when we speak with the 50 when we're, we're talking about the 50 top employers or uh, identifying potential business partnerships and, and the board of trade focus groups can we get a list of those because I just I, I kind of want to know specifically who we're talking to and what uh, you know what we're what we're doing in terms of that so question and, and a request at the same time. Uh, Do you, Madam Mayor? Yes, absolutely. We can share that information with you. Um, and the second question, just to, I guess for clarification, I guess for the information of, of, of our residents, you know, when we're working with Sheridan, when we're going to be working with uh, Ryerson, we're going to be speaking to the province as well, uh, the proposal, final proposal will be uh, submitted in um, July 2017 and I guess uh, uh, there'll be some type of announcement in the fall. The province has the final say, yes or no? Uh, you, Madam Mayor, 
Yeah, this, the, the province are leading this initiative. So if they're, if they're in, um, do they bring their own, uh, will they provide their own opinion as, as to whether, for example, uh, say if uh, uh, Ryerson in the city chooses a location, if they had a preferred one, can they uh, basically overrule uh, or make a decision themselves as to where, you know, uh, a location may be? You know, I'm, I'm going to jump into this one and help Michelle because I think you're asking things that are beyond her pay grade at this point. Mm -hmm. Having had a, a quick conversation with Sheldon Levy, the Deputy Minister, they're using right. kind of a, a, a chart where they get, get points for each part of their application and, and location will be part of that conversation. I, I don't think any of us know what that will look like, but it's certainly something that we're trying to engage and we'll be talking with the province about our desire to... Um, work with our strategic plan in making sure that Ryerson understands where we feel investment would be mm -hmm. best. What, what I'm trying to get at is, it, will this be a collective decision uh, being made by, by all parties in, involved? Three, my mayor. Sorry, Councillor. Would, would it be a, a, a decision like, for example, I'm just using hypothetically a location as an example. Uh, will the location be a, a, an agreement made collectively? Like, will everybody provide their input? Or is it just a, uh, can, I, I think So I'm that, going to jump in again. Yeah. I think we can all give our input. Yeah. The city will not be making the final decision. That's what I want to know. The final decision is the province's vote. It'll be a, a combination between, I believe, the proponent and the province. And obviously we want to be, we want to assist them. But I think that's, I think that's what it's going to look like. Again, we're dealing with a brand new proposal and, and this has, and lots of things within this proposal have changed in the last year. That's what I think it is right now, and obviously, as Michelle and I hear things, we will share with Council. Absolutely, and the reason why I ask is because there's a lot of questions that the residents are uh, bringing to me, and I'm sure uh, to the rest of Council as well, as to um, you know what the process is it, it, exactly. But uh, I guess we'll we'll uh, we'll, uh, uh, we'll wait for the, the, the next update. I see you looking around. Confused. Okay. Thank you, Councillor Gibson. Councilor Dillon brought up what I was going to ask kind of in a different way, though, because I received a couple of um, emails and calls from people who, well, let's put it this way. This isn't a done deal, and it's being portrayed as being a done deal. Perhaps it's got a university, but it's really not yet, right? It's a, correct me if I'm wrong, please. It, it's a negotiation right now between the two parties in the province and the city, for instance, um, if one of the properties that they want to use is city property, then the city's obviously going to have to have a say in which one of those properties. If it's not, I mean, this could happen. Uh, the province could say, this is what Brampton's got, this is where it is, and this is what it's going to be. And the city's not involved. And likely the city's going to have to be involved. We all know that. We all know that. We're going to have to put our, our skin in the game. Um, province still could pull the plug on this. The province pulled the plug on the last council. Even though people want to try to blame the last council, council did, last council did put out properties and said, here's properties we're willing to talk about. We're willing to contribute for our share. The process was stopped by the province at that time and rethought about it and then came back. So you can't blame the last council for not, for not doing anything. We certainly did. Um, so there is those <laughs> concerns there. Do we know what Milton got? I haven't read the paper, so I don't know. Did they get a, a partnership at, at all that, or announced? Uh Through you, Madam Mayor, uh, the province did state that the applicant for uh, Milton was uh, Laurier. Laurier. But there, it's important to note that this was a, an expression of interest, mm -hmm. that you're absolutely right, it's the start of a conversation. A more formal proposal will be submitted. So, so at this stage, it's a conversation, right. and it's a submission. It's an expression of interest, not a formal proposal. I'm glad you discussed. said that because you know I'm hearing all these things about people saying this is a done deal. Brandon's got it. There's a lot of work to be done. A lot of heavy lifting to be done in, in this now. And I'm hearing about these workshops that are going out there and with Ryerson already and stuff. I'm going, how could that be? This is not something that's happened. Um, having said all that, um, I'm a little disappointed that 
we, you know, we thought we were going to be able to get choices, and now we're not. But having said that, I'm not sure there would be a better choice than a partnership between Ryerson and Sheridan. So that's the good news in all this. And you know, I had somebody say to me, "Well, you know, it's the city said we're going to get choices. You're going to be able to pick, pick." And, and, that. and I said, "Well, yeah, we were told that, and that's what we thought was going to happen." But when you're dealing with the province, you, you don't always get what you want. But at the end of the day. Is there anything wrong with Rock Ryerson? Is there anything wrong with Sheridan? I mean, that partnership, to me, Sheridan, in, in an education sense of the word, Sheridan has probably been the best, <coughs> the best thing for us since they've been there. Sheridan's been fantastic. And now to have Ryerson come in and, and have some type of partnership with them, I can't, I can't see it being any better. So. At the, end of this, at the end of the day, I, I want to make sure that we, ha we now, though, get a say in it. So I don't want a, some deal being made through other people, other uh, talking to the province and that. It's got to be council and council and all of us. Not one or two people meeting with folks. And, and we need to make sure, when you talk about businesses, um, we need to be focusing on all the businesses in Brampton. Because, you know, not a knock on the Board of Trade, but the Board of Trade represent a very small portion of all the businesses in Brampton. So we got to reach out to them all and make sure that they have a say in this. But, you know, i got to say, staff, way to go. You've done a fantastic job getting us to this point. And now we, we all have to, I think, do the heavy lifting and make sure that whatever it is we get at the end of the day, it's a really good partnership for it. And I, I think that. I think we're going in the right direction. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Spovieri. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor, and uh, thank you uh, for the presentation. Uh, just uh, a little bit to expand on, uh, on the issue about the report that's coming in two weeks, you said, to us, to Council. Um, I, and I'm, I'm hoping that um, it will be a very detailed report uh, to uh, basically uh, uh, Lead us in how whatever how you got to the point where you were at. Um, I don't certainly don't just I don't I hope I don't get a report, but we don't get a report where uh, a staff comes in as well. This is a site that uh, we feel is the best site, or this is a site that uh, the university uh, prefers. Um, I, I, I hope it's more detailed than that, and that, with a justification report as to why uh, this, these locations or location are being looked at, uh, so that um, um, you know the council can weigh in, and uh, if there's uh, room for for discussion from a council perspective as to uh, where council may feel, uh, if we have that opportunity, if unless the, uh, the university says this is where we want to be and either we go here or otherwise we walk, then that's fine, you know, that's, that's, but if it's, negoti it's negotiable, I think we should have a, a, an opportunity to negotiate, to uh, debate that here in this council. Uh, so I, I look forward to the uh, report and I hope it's very detailed and, uh, and um, also of course, um, we may be shocked uh, to hear that we may have to put in, the city may have to put in a huge amount of money, taxpayers' money, into the project, which then council will have to decide whether we want to do that or not, you know, depending on how much. So, you know, there's, I think that there's still a lot of unknowns there that uh, uh, we have to deal with before we can uh, say with certainty that we, we've got a university landed here in the city. So we we'll look forward to the report. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Councillor Medeiros. Uh, thank you, through the Chair. Uh, thank you very much for the presentation, the work. I think it's exciting news. I know Ryerson's been in the community before already doing workshops around innovation with local groups, and uh, uh, the fact that they've uh, expressed interest, I think it's fantastic. Um, I think one of the biggest challenges that you're having just seen here in this table is managing expectations. You know, what our role is, what our role is, how can we influence it, what are the influencers. Uh, you know, certainly Ryerson and, and it's going to be driving a lot of this and there'll be input so uh, you know uh, congratulations on the yeoman's work but I just really wanted to through the chair um, just uh, we, we tend to you know I, I talked about the engagement and the communication and I can tell you from last time we met what an improvement that I've noticed 
the presence on social media. You guys did a bang job with those videos, uh, getting that information out there. So just keep it up, and uh, you know, but uh, you know, just kudos because uh, I recognize uh, uh, the work that staff did, and you're seeing that impact in the community. So thank you very much. It's the Bob's again videos, isn't it? Yeah, that's what did it. Yeah, I knew that. Okay, Councillor Wellens. <coughs> yeah, just quickly through you, Madam Mayor. Um, I'm glad you clarified the. Uh, the rumor about the location, because just actually last night when I was, <coughs> excuse me, walking home from the library meeting, a resident approached us and uh, had mentioned a location, so we nipped it in the bud and said there's no location, so it's just, I'm glad you clarified it here today, because we assured him that there hadn't been no location, and he seemed to be good with that, but there is a rumor out there, so thanks. Councillor Moore. Thank you, uh, through you, Madam Mayor. Thank you for the presentation, Michelle. Um, I just want to reinforce how how important, but how important it shouldn't be, um, the issue of the location. Everybody in this community is fixated on where should it be, where is it going to be, because there are different folks in the community who have different opinions about where it should be, when really we should be focusing on the program components to it, um, you know, how it's strengthening our relationship with the business community and the opportunities that it's presenting for the city, everybody's fixated on where is it going to be. And so I think we need to be prepared for that, regardless of where the, the conversation takes us about location, there are going to be folks who are disappointed. And so we need to manage that disappointment. And uh, the messaging, the positive messaging about this needs to be um, stronger than the voices of disappointment. So I think that's just something that we need to be aware of. It, the CAO talks about over-promising and under-delivering and the cautions of that. In this case, you know, it's, it's a very similar uh, kind of controlling the message that we need to be aware of. So thank you. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you for all the work that you do. And um, I like the fact that we're talking about a university. That's good. It's all better. So thank you very much. And I have a motion moved by Councillor Fortini, seconded by Councillor Bowman, that the presentation by Michelle McCollum, Director, Strategic Development Office of the Chief Administrative Officer, to the Council meeting of March 29th regarding the university update be received. All those in favor? That's carried. Uh, we're at item 8.1. This is considered as part of item 6.1. 8.2 was considered as part of the consent motion, and 8.3 was part of consent motion. We're now at uh, committee reports, and I'm going to ask Councillor Moore to step in for me. I have other municipal business, and uh, thank her for taking over the rest of the meeting. Bear with me for a moment here while I organize my paperwork. Uh, the next item on the agenda is 10.1. It's the minutes of the Citizen Appointment Committee. And I'll turn this over to Councillor Willens, who chaired the Citizen Appointments. Thank you. Through you, Madam uh, Chair. Uh, on March 22nd, uh, we had the Citizen Appointment Committee uh, met with residents and um, <clears throat> that we're going to come on to our new age-friendly uh, Brampton Advisory Committee. So uh, the item is in closed session. If if we could bring it forward to now, so we don't have to deal with it in closed. And I think okay. Peter's going to put the, the name. Put it on the screen for us. I don't know if I have. So you see on the name, the names are on the screen now. Uh, the four members: Frank Lauder, Shaban. I think she said her name was Shay. Chibber, Joyce Temple-Smith, they were all selected for the 55 plus and Fatima Barron is our youth representative so far. The, uh, there was uh, two are on the, as alternates, are Sue uh, Chada and Marjorie Taylor are on, as alternates. So if we could, uh, I guess we approve that now, Peter, can we? Okay, before I see we, no before questions we, uh, on the board. There's, mm -hmm. no, uh, there's no speakers on the board. Okay, that's good. But uh, before we do, uh, uh, I'd like to thank the uh, 
thank the committee, uh, uh, Councilor Medeiros, Councilor Fertini, Councilor uh, Paleshi for sitting in the, uh, the meetings. It was uh, We had some good comments on what would make up an age-friendly uh, committee, so uh, I think we've got on our way to having a great committee. So I guess, Peter, do we just vote on these, on these now? Yeah. So, so if Peter wants to do the motion. Thank you. We'll take this vote first. Uh, members of Council, it's been moved by Councillor Willen, seconded by Councillor Fortini, that the appointments that you see presented on the board be approved. All those in favour? That's carried. The next, um, I, it's moved by Councillor Willen, seconded by Councillor Fortini again, that the minutes of the Citizen Appointment Committee be received and that they be approved as outlined in the subject minutes. All those in favour? That's carried. The next item on the agenda is 10.2. They are the planning minutes. I did chair that meeting and just by way of a, an overview, we had um, a possible delegation on the site-specific amendment to the sign bylaw for Wet n Wild Toronto and you would recall that earlier today when we approved the agenda, the bylaw for that has been uh, included on today's agenda. We also had one added delegation of Sharon G. Graywall regarding a property on Goreway Drive. We had five reports under the planning uh, part of the agenda. Two were, were for Ward 8, one being the Wet n Wild Toronto si Amendment to the Sign Bylaw, and one was an application to amend the Official Plan and Zoning Bylaw put forward by Humphreys Consultant. There were two reports for Ward 10. One was for a residential demolition of 10691 the Gore Road, and there was a proposed dra draft plan of subdivision again for Humphreys, Humphreys Planning Group. There was one for Ward 6, that was a residential demolition permit at 1637 Mayfield Road. We had the minutes of the Brampton Heritage Board and uh, one piece of correspondence from the Region of Peel on the adoption of the ROPA number 27. Councillor Medeiros, under the question, Councillor's question period, asked for an update which was provided by staff on the Heritage District public meetings that are scheduled for next month, I believe, uh, Heather. And seeing that, there are no questioners on the board. Uh, can I move the minutes as the chair? I'll move the minutes, seconded by Councillor Sprovieri, that the minutes be received and that the recommendations outlined in the report be approved. All those in favour? That's carried. The next item on the agenda, there were two items of correspondence today that were in consent. We'll move now to item 18.1. These were circulated uh, previously prepared by Lowell Rubin Bond from the CAO's office. Are there any questions on that? Seeing none, it's been moved by Councillor Gibson, seconded by myself, that they be received. All those in favour? That's carried. We move to public question period. Are there any members of the public in attendance today who have a question on a matter that was dealt with on today's agenda. Welcome. If you could come forward to uh, and state your name. And you, there is 15 minutes uh, set aside at the end of each uh, council meeting for such questions. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Cody Batcher. Um, 18 years old right now. I'm studying to be an electrician. Um, Cody, can, can you just wait a moment? Is there a way to turn up the microphone? I'm having trouble hearing you. It's on. It's on? It's Sorry, on. maybe I should speak louder then. Okay. Um, in regards to the youth employment for the future ready plan, the, the vision that we have for our city, um, are we current, is the city working with businesses to empower them, give them tools, whether it be incentives, to give them the more str stronger abilities to hire youth? I don't know if that's a I'm, I'm going to ask the CAO if he can respond to that. Unfortunately, we have so few members of the public show up 
that staff, when the regular business of the day has concluded, they uh, head back to their desks. And our director of uh, economic development was here with his staff earlier, but I see he's left. Um, through you, Chair. Um, firstly, I, I will get your name and, and yeah. things that, that if there's mm -hmm. gaps, I'll follow up with mm -hmm. you personally. But you know, from uh, previous experience, you know, running active departments before, we don't provide funding to. Mm -hmm. The local municipality doesn't provide yeah. funding to the business, but we a lot of businesses when they're wanting to locate here mm -hmm. ask us to help them and foster some relationships mm -hmm. with with provincial and federal programs. So we do a lot of work on that, helping yeah. businesses. Some small businesses don't have the time to look up all the different mm -hmm. grant programs. Yeah. So we help connect businesses okay. to those programs, both provincially mm -hmm. and federally. That will yeah. help. Okay. And we can be more specific if I get your name. Certainly. But we do a lot of that, um, fostering that relationship. Thank you. That does, that does answer my question very well. Okay. Yep. Thank you Thank very you much. Thank you very much. Someone would like to move receipt of the delegation. Oh, Councillor Dillon, seconded by Councillor Willens. All in favor? That's carried. At this point, we have the bylaws. They have been moved by Councillor Pileschi, seconded by Councillor Sprovieri, that the bylaws 49 2017 to 56 2017 before Council at its regular meeting on March 29th be given the required number of readings taken by the Mayor and the City Clerk and the corporate seal affixed there too. All those in favor? That's carried. Now closed session, we'll take a motion to move into closed session. Moved by Councillor Fortini, seconded by Councillor Bowman, that we proceed into closed session to discuss matters pertaining to 21.1, which are the minutes of the closed session City Council March the 8th, 21.2 minutes of the closed session of the Brampton Heritage Board, March the 21st, 2017. 21.3 minutes of the closed session Citizen Appointment Committee, March the 22nd, 2017. 21.4, a report from Matthew Ray, Legal Counsel, Corporate Services, dated March the 14th, three, the Conservation Review Board hearing, litigation or potential litigation, including matters before administrative tribunals affecting the municipality or local board. And 21.5, personal matter to matters about an individual, identifiable individual, including municipal or local board employees, and litigation or potential litigation, including matters before administrative tribunals affecting the municipality or local board, and labor relations or employee negotiations, and identifiable individual. It's quite a mouthful. All those in favor? That's carried. Uh, we're going to proceed directly in camera. If that's the will, or do, would you like to take a 15-minute 15, 15 break? We'll conclude at 11.45. Oh. Five minutes. Five minutes? Five minutes? Okay. Then how about 11.30? 11.30, that's eight minutes. Is that okay? 11.30. Uh, sixth floor, boardroom? Okay. <laughs>